okay? Hey everybody, we're in front of Nintendo New York. I am here with the legendary Wes. This I don't guy's. Know. I don't know about that. Man, nah, don't listen to him. Right. He's been around the scene, what, oldest Smash Brothers um, group since going back to 2002, right? Yeah. And still around now. Um, you're also the president of um, vice president. The of, vice president. Yes, vice president of SOS Gamers. We're a not-for-profit organization. We basically utilize games to help bridge the gap between technology and lower-income society in um, New York City. Ah, see, and using video games at that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Wes is here because um, we are at a we are at the threshold. In less than one week, the Nintendo Switch will launch. Madness. And there's something that he did with SOS Gamers and Deadly Alliance last year. Um, shout outs to Nintendo Life because they're the ones who guys have covered it and 8 Way Run who streamed it. Mm -hmm. And that was the 4v4 smash for the Wii U. Mm -hmm. You guys had one, you guys are pushing this entire initiative on trying to get Smash to become a 4v4 esports um, um, you know, com competition. What do you think of the chances of that kind of influencing Nintendo to bring Smash onto the Switch and go 4v4? Uh, the reason why is because Smash, to me, <laughs> I love Smash. And Nintendo is about bringing the community together. And I feel that one-on-ones kind of make people feel segregated. A team-based strategy tournament like 4v4s is good for the community because it builds um, brotherhood, you know, sisterhood, whatever you want to call it. It brings people together and it actually organizes people, it organizes teams. So for example, you have you know, games like League of Legends, um, Dota, those events, they have a bunch of teams. Overwatch. I feel that, yeah, Overwatch, yeah. all of those type of games. So I think Smash Brothers, in order for us to really push up the level of us being in esports, we should do things like 4v4 to help us get a little bit more of the limelight. And, and, and 4v4, as I understood it, because I wasn't here in America when mm -hmm. you actually did the event. Yeah. You know, I just pretty much helped with the promotion. I just made the connection mm -hmm. to you and Nintendo Life and just helped try to promote it to, um, to kind of get it some um, push. But I watched a stream that 8 Way Run had um, did with it, and it looks like it's almost a completely different game when you're playing 4v4. Talk about that. Here's, here's the um, misconception people have about 4v4. They think that 4v4 is a complete mess, that it's just bodies everywhere, and that, you know, I guess the first thing for us to start is 3v3. I beg to differ because 4v4 is kind of like strategy, tactical fighter. Everyone has to play their role. You can't just come in as Link and Sonic all in once. One person has to be the stock tank, the other person has to be the aggressor, the other person just has to be the sniper. So it's different roles to be played. You, that's why I think people have the misconception about 4v4s is just a bunch of cluster fighting. And and seeing that and that that's a true team-based games. If you mm -hmm. look at if you look at how esports has evolved over the, the, the last three decades as a whole, uh, this you can tell that the team-based versions of esports are the ones that really take off onto the commercial level, you mm -hmm. know. And, and we're talking about uh, FIFA, like as we mentioned, Overwatch and League of Legends, Dota, um, even Paladins and Halo, C Call of Duty. So all those games are team-based, and everyone plays a particular role, as if you were to do in basketball, mm -hmm. baseball, football, or any team-based game. So I really think, I really, really think, and I really hope that Nintendo does what they do uh, for Mario Kart for Smash Brothers because Nintendo is in a, a prime position to make the return, not a start, the return to esports. <laughs> so I, we gotta clear this up with a lot of people. If you watch one of my um, episodes, like in the very, very beginning of this um, Switch launch, you'll see I, I do a whole segment on Nintendo and esports. They've been around since 1990, but Splatoon, Mario Kart, they can even go Tetris Puyo Pop if they really want. Smash Brothers, and then e well, Pokemon has always been around. They've mm -hmm. been doing Pokemon BG um, for a very long time. But if Nintendo did those games, Nintendo would create a massive impact in the actual esports realm. And it's good to, uh, and I, what, what's your, what, where's DA gonna be in all of this when Nintendo decides to do this? Well, I mean, we'll be there because DA, we've been, we've been around for a long time and we all love teams. So DA is definitely gonna be there, but on the SOS side, we plan on um, hosting a lot more 4v4 events. We're trying to host a circuit inside New York City 
a 4v4 um, smash cir circuit called, you know, the gauntlet. If people don't know the name, it's going to be called the gauntlet. A uh, 4v4 format smash. And we hope everyone comes and supports. We already got a, um, a venue, so now we just need other things to just fall in place for us to have this event. Good stuff. What, mm -hmm. uh, would you, uh, can you talk about the venue? Which venue is uh, this? The venue is inside of a school. It's on, um, it's Lower East Side. It's in, um, I, I guess the name of the, the establishment is called the Beacon um, University Settlement. So they partner up with SOS Gamers and they're going to let us use their facility to um, run these events out of. So all we need to do now is just get a little bit more staffing, equipment, etc. And we should be all fine. I think in about a month or so, we should be having it full running. So you guys take a look out for it. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. This is like the, the pro esports section of the, the, the vlog. Next thing we're going to be talking about is the Nintendo Switch complimentary handheld system. So that's up next. Thanks for having, coming on, Wes. Thank really you. appreciate it. Later. I see you. Who is this? What, what is this? Who is this mysterious person? He's still the kid. Hey, can I play? Can I play with the joy? Oh, wait. Who's the guy who's like who was here earlier? Right here. The HD Rumble, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Swift. <laughs> I love the Odyssey hat, too. Like, that is, that is a good touch. I love it. I love it. All right, black or, uh, black or gray? Uh, black. Look at this. I think that the silver is going to show up the best. Where are you going to sign? The arms or the middle? I was thinking like on the brim if you're okay. Yeah, wherever. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. I think if we do Triforce and then C and D and then if you have anyone else sign it, it would be like on the Joy-Cons or something or... So then black will work on the, on the brim. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Or it writes well. Perfect. You know, this is neater than any of the other autographs I've done. <laughs> Perfect. Da -na -na -na. So what you think about the vir um, the next handheld system being the successor to the Virtual Boy? We don't talk about the Virtual Boy. Hey guys, man. It's been another great day here at um, Nintendo New York. Community is great. Came by, we did some autographs. You know, thank you, Mike, for dropping off those chicken wings. Those chicken wings were ridiculous. We had a great time, we went downstairs, we ate and everything. But um, today I want to focus with you guys on a one-on-one, -on -one, something kind of important. It's about the future of Nintendo as a whole, community and the industry. Now, you must be wondering, why does Triforce have the virtual board in the background? So I'm not too sure if a lot of you guys ever heard that um, about Nintendo saying they're not giving up on the handheld. And the Switch is the literal true next-gen console in the entire industry, not just for Nintendo, but the entire industry. So what's gonna be the next true next-gen handheld? And the true next-gen handheld is gonna be this. I'm letting you guys know that right now. Nintendo has always been about the, um, the next step. And if you look at Nintendo's history, they've always been a, a, ahead of the curve. And Nintendo, when, when you look at the Nintendo 3DS, look back in, in the past, you'll find out that when they made 
the Game & Watch, they had the Nintendo MS, which is called the Nintendo Multi-Screen. I have the Zelda one, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know about the MS, all the OGs out there. And you'll start to find out, wait a minute, the 3DS is not necessarily original. No, Nintendo has been ahead of its time by 15 to 20 years. And when you look at the Virtual Boy now, the Virtual Boy was trying to do something with virtual reality that Nintendo never got a chance to truly explore or go in depth with. The game, the system was great in its concept, but poorly executed. But look at the Nintendo 3DS and what they've been doing with augmented reality. Look at the Oculus and look what we're getting in into virtual reality. And when you think about it, if the 3DS isn't going to be replaced um, in its standard form, meaning the 3DS really can't compete with the Nintendo Switch because the Nintendo Switch is also portable. It's a console. There's so many things it can do that the 3DS really cannot do. Touch screen and everything. So what can Nintendo's handheld do to remain relevant in the modern times and be able to keep up with its um, parent, the Nintendo Switch? And the only direction Nintendo has, the only direction Nintendo has is virtual and augmented reality, which the Nintendo 3DS focuses on going back to when they launched. So Nintendo has five years plus and more on this type of technology. So when they make the next handheld, don't be surprised about it really focusing on augmented reality and really focusing on virtual reality. You have a lot of things out there now from the Oculus. If you look at Nintendo's competitors and the other companies, they're also working on um, VR. I don't know about AR, but they're also working on VR technology. But Nintendo's next handheld system, I doubt they're going to call it Virtual Boy. But it will be the successor to Virtual Boy and it will bring in a godlike age for handheld gaming. We've all become used to playing 3D um, games on our Nintendo 3DS. They've improved on it with the new, um, the new Nintendo 3DS in terms of its 3D ability. And the way they are making their new games now, the, the sizes of the games. Look at the Nintendo Switch. These things are running on cards that's just as big, if not slightly bigger than um, you know, SD cards or whatever the case may be. So it's not hard to believe that the next handheld system can do exactly that, run those powerful games at those graphics that will focus on virtual reality and that will focus on augmented reality. So I want you guys to understand that the Switch is Nintendo making the Switch in the new age and the industry and the, gen and the true next gen console and handheld. Remember, you heard this here first at the Nintendo Switch launch with Captain Nintendo and Triforce. Let me know what you guys comments about this entire segment. This is more like a public service announcement, more informative than anything else. But let me know what you guys comments are. I'll be chatting with a lot of you guys on this on, you know, what you guys think about the the successor to the Virtual Boy as a complimentary handheld to the console that Nintendo has been having for generations going back to the NES with the Game Boy, Game Boy Color to the Super Game Boy, um, um, to the Super Nintendo, um, the, the Advance with the, um, the, what's the name of this thing here? The Nintendo 64, the SP with the GameCube, the DS with the, um, the Wii, the 3DS with the Wii U. So what's gonna come out for the Nintendo Switch? Talk to you guys later.